Why, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you. I thought I'd give you guys a nice little setup tour. Uh, because I was watching over a Vanguard 427's guide to YouTube again, because I, you know, I'm like, hey, look at this old video. And I realized I should kind of update the things a little bit and some settings, because some stuff has changed. And if people are going to be watching this, uh, I want them to have the proper information and stuff. So yeah, that's just a little sign. But, yeah, let's just get into it. The door, everything's, everything, well not everything's the same. Now if you remember from the first Venga 427's Guide to YouTube, things have changed. There used to be a table here, and then the table by the window. Now what has happened is it's more of an L-shaped table, if I can try to show that. Also, yes, there are less lights, mostly because of glare on my monitor, just because I have a good monitor, it's 1080p 60 hertz kind of thing, but it's the whole, with the way the light is, and I'm getting clearly over it, but kind of thing, with the way the light is, it just really bounces off and stuff. So yeah, this is just a bunch of stuff, not, I don't, I haven't physically gotten any new objects or anything like that, but this, this is where the magic happens. Now, one thing to point out, nothing about my setup has really changed. Like, I've still got the same mat, still same mouse, same keyboard, monitor, same microphone, uh, you know, audio interface, and all the same bits in my computer. I still have a, I think it, yeah, it's a GTX 950 Ti, I think, yeah. And then I have a uh, Intel... Core i5, 6500 Skylake, and it runs at 3.2 gigahertz, uh, but with Intel Turbo Boost enabled, uh, which I can, you know, you do in the BIOS kind of thing, it can go up to 3.6, which is what my computer's doing now, which makes it actually quite a nice bit faster, so it's pretty good. Still a really good thing. I, again, would I love to get a new, you know, processor that can go up to 4 gigahertz? Yes. But can it wait? Also yes. So yeah. I'll just kind of go over the equipment that I have just to kind of update you on everything. So, start with off the keyboard and mouse. I think the mouse is it's a Corsair Razor? Corsair Razor or... Come on. Raise the, raise the brightness. Raise the brightness. Actually, don't do that. Hold on. There you go. I was just going crazy. Okay. It's a Corsair Strafe. Or not Strafe. I don't know. It's generic good Corsair mouse. Uh, it only has two side buttons. One, two, and then the top one, which can change the color and stuff and different colors of different settings. I just always keep it at red just because it's my favorite color. I think it's a medium-sized Corsair mat kind of thing. And then keyboard. I still have the nice... Uh, I think it's Cherry MX Red keyboard. I would like to, you know, get a blue, but I still do like the clickiness and kind of stuff. I, I like how it's still got an older, kind of almost echoey, kind of virtual computer kind of thing. Uh, oh yeah, that's just an Apple Classic computer. That's that's not actually that important. I mean, it's important, but you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, it's the same one. Again, you still have the settings, things like that. You know, I got the nice Kubri key stuff, things like that. Then on to the uh, microphone and audio interface. So the microphone I have is an Apex limited edition A35A condenser medium diaphragm side address microphone. Now, that's a lot to take in, but it's actually a pretty good, like it, it's a very nice microphone and we got it on sale and stuff like that. As a lot of the stuff I do get is, you know, on a cheaper price if you buy a certain amount of kind. But it, it may sound, Again, a, like an uber fancy microphone, but it's really, it's just a simple microphone. It's got a pop filter on that came with it kind of thing. Yeah, it doesn't have anything too fancy, I guess, but it's a really good one. Now, obviously, you know, it's an XLR microphone because you got to get the good quality. Uh, and then moving on to the audio interface. Yes, there is the little logo on there. I made that in graphic design. Fingers are broken though. So getting on to the audio interface, this is a Steinberg UR12 USB audio interface. Uh, I think it's, I can't remember the kilohertz, or no, 
you can hurt. I can't remember the hertz ratio input kind of stuff, but it's really good. So obviously there's the cord for it. Got the input gain set. A couple notches kind of thing. Now the cool thing about this one is if I, I don't know where I had, I had cool adapters that didn't come with it, but I just randomly had, and I can plug them into here. So this is where like a dynamic microphone would go into this little hole. I can, okay, I can't do anything about that. Wait, hold on. There we go. So a dynamic microphone would go into that one, and then obviously XLR, or uh, condenser microphone, so yeah, that that this one can deliver the 48 uh, phantom power volts kind of thing. So yeah, now I'm getting you know really technical. Ah, this this is what one of the adapters looked like. It goes from a I think I can't I don't know the actual name, but it's like a professional audio jack to the more you know normal one kind of thing. Plugs into there, and then I just have my headset, and then it just boop, and I can press that button if the microphone's on, and I can listen to myself, and that's just the audio for the headset. So yeah, and then this is obviously a USB one, uh, just because all nowadays all audio interfaces have to have a USB port kind of thing, just because that's how they all plug into the computer kind of thing. Uh, moving on to the headset, I have a Corsair HS50 gaming headset, so it does have, it does come with the microphone and the uh, audio jacks that can plug directly into the computer. I just have them connected via the audio jack just because it makes it easier. I obviously don't use those ones. Uh, sometimes when I am gaming, I will unplug my headset from there and plug it into the computer. Just cause kind of thing makes it real good, you know, for using the microphone microphone in gaming kind of thing. But the downside to that is that you hear, you get like artificial back noise. So you hear like that's kind of like a, Almost as if I were to turn the audio gain up and you'll hear like fans kind of run. It's weird. With this, I don't, and it makes the audio really clear and it's still stereo like it's beautiful. So this is a stereo headset, by the way. Uh, yeah. Now, that was kind of, the, that, that was the setup tour and obviously I explained to you what's in my beautiful computer. Uh, things like that. The, uh, monitor I have is, it, it's this one with the, with the this. Focus. That. There we go. And then, yeah, that's just my backdrop and things like that. So, uh, now I will get into more of the. There we go. More of the, uh, I guess you say internal technical stuff about what I used to record, uh, and the settings for that. And yeah, this is because this little bit has been going for way too long. Okay, so now to the recording software use. So I use. OBS 64-bit, I think that's just kind of like a given now, uh, just because OBS is really good and it's just amazing. As much as some videos I have in the past uh, may look a little weird, that's just because it's the whole it's format and video uploading, things like that. But in reality, OBS is freaking amazing. It is beautiful. And if you have the correct settings, things can come out at a very acceptable, decent file size and amazing quality. So we're going to start off with the first things here that you can clearly see. And uh, we'll start off with the mixer. So here I just have uh, the basic desktop audio on this one that is set to 6, uh, well, negative 6 decibels, so it's a little quieter than my microphone. So my microphone is set to maximum, and the gain in on you, obviously, on my actual interface is a little higher. So what ends up happening is when I'm editing videos, I'll, well, audio, I'll explain that in a bit. So as you can clearly see, the mic audio slash agility thing, that's here, so that's the way I was able to record. And then just display capture, and then I've got one for game capture, but you know, I'm not using that one right now kind of thing. And then I've just got them locked just because that makes sure well they're locked and it's you know they don't change kind of thing. So yeah, so now let's get into the actual settings. Now I'm not gonna be able to change anything or mess around with stuff just because again I'm recording. So process priority is always gonna be set to high just because again it gives you the best quality and it, you may think it may lag but that's not actually what makes it uh, lag the process priority is not what makes it lag it's the settings for the recording depending on what computer you have that will make it lag so renderer always set it to direct the, the, the most advanced direct something you have in this case mine's direct 3d11 
color format, since I have an NVIDIA graphics card, it's going to be NV12. Always set your uh, uh, YUV color space to the highest it can go, and in this case, it, it's got a full range. And then this kind of stuff doesn't exactly matter. This is what I've left it on. Audio monitoring device isn't that necessary kind of thing. Hotkeys. Now, I just use F9 and F6 for my hotkeys, so F9 is start, F6 is stop. Simple, easy, and a lot. you don't need to get into much this kind of thing because that can get really complicated, very weird. Again, that's more for, I guess you could say, people who want to get super uber fancy kind of thing, but you don't need to do that. Going into video. Now, since my, dis my monitor display is 1920 by 1080 p I record in, guess what? 1920 by 1080p, so I got both my stuff set to that. Downscale filter is set to as high as it can possibly be because that means, well, it's sharp and scaling. So this means that it stays the proper quality, the best thing, things will look blurry on screen or have weird bitrate problems, things like that. Everything just looks great the way that the screen is shown, I guess you could say. So this way there's you know, not too much change in the thing. 60 frames per second, obviously, because that's the hertz of my monitor and just because 1080p 60 frames per second has become the base for YouTube. Audio. So I record at 48 kilohertz just because that's good for my microphone. That's good for my microphone is technically I think 41 or something but uh, recording a little bit higher for some reason worked better than not. I don't know. It's weird. So obviously it's the Steinberg UR12. That's my audio interface for my microphone. And then for desktop audio, I've just got default. So if you're recording, say again, certain other microphone or auxiliary, certain other inputs, say you have like a Discord channel and you're doing a multiplayer thing, you probably want to set mic auxiliary to that or something. Or if you again, you had more microphones and different audio interfaces, or you had a USB microphone, something like that, that's what you want to go with. And then obviously your desktop audio would be a second form of input. Always have it at stereo, because some people think that uh, YouTube, you know, downgrades the video and it only goes to mono, and it's like, that's not actually the case. The reason why your video goes to mono is because, well, you have all your settings set to mono, and you always want to go with stereo, because this way you can get cool surround sound. So even if your earbuds that you might have, or again, headset, or again, always recommend a headset kind of thing, even if they don't do stereo, which I know some do, and it's just mono, that's going to be like the only case that your video turns out to be mono, but everything, it's always best to have it at stereo. Now the push to enable stuff and delay, again, that's only if you want to have, again, I know it's a, it's a push to enable kind of thing. Very easy. Now we're going to get into the more, the technical stuff, so the output. So here we have the streaming tab. Now this one, I've just kind of left alone and I don't use. So that one, and that's if you're streaming. I'll get to that in a second. So recording. So this is what I'm doing now. So as you can see, I'm going to have to blur that name out there. But uh, you just have to you set your file destination. And then in the original uh, Vingman 427's guide to YouTube, I said to never set your thing to MP4. That was a big lie. Always set it to MP4 because the file sizes are a little bit smaller and the quality is actually better. And it just works overall with better stuff, less finicky, things like that. Now, as you can clearly see here, I've got two audio tracks. So this is one and this is two. That means you have to set them to the two audio tracks. The encoder, since I have a NVIDIA graphics card, it's going to be EVENC H.264. For the encoder, it runs the best. It doesn't slow my computer down. It gives me the best quality. There is an X264, but again, that's for older computers. Rescale output, well, I don't want to do that. And I don't know really why you would want to do that, but that's a case of if you want to record and if you have something that's 1080p, but you want to downscale it to 720p, which I don't know why you do, because 1080p is obviously superior. The, the more pixels, the better. Oh, just bump my bump microphone, okay. Now to the uh, control bit rate stuff. So always go with CBR because what that means is it's controlled bit rate. So you can get there's VBR that's an option and you don't go with that because that means variable. So that what that means is there could be a scene or something in a game where 
literally your computer might want to, you know, doesn't need as much. So it might, you know, as much power to do or something. So what OBS might do is if it's not variable bitrate, it'll put less bitrate into it. Now, what you're thinking, oh, well, it makes it easier. But what that can do is that really just downgrades the quality of the video kind of thing or something. I'm not the best explainer, but controlled bitrate means that the bitrate over all the entire video will be the same. So you won't have one section of the video that's at, uh, like, I don't know, like five, what was that, 50,000 bitrate, and then one that's at like 9,000 bit, like 90,000 bitrate. Again, that's like a really hard, really weird exaggeration, but it, it keeps the quality constant and you won't have any weird variations. Now for me, since I have a pretty good computer, that's pretty freaking amazing, uh, Again, not the, is it the best in the world? No, but you know what I mean. I set mine to 70,000. Now, if you have a lower one that runs at a lower clock speed, uh, like, I mean, CPU, and you have a, uh, like, a not as good uh, graphics card kind of thing, obviously set that stuff lower. And obviously, yes, that will affect your quality, uh, I'm afraid, but, excuse me, but that's just the case just because some people don't always have, you know, the best computers kind of thing like that. Now, uh, just to, just to note, uh, mention this to you guys, the bit rate, so the higher the bit rate, the bigger the file size will be, and also if your bit rate is too high for your computer to handle, uh, it's pretty much out of its range kind of thing, then uh, that's when you will start encountering like. Keyframe interval, just keep that at zero. Preset quality, always want to go with the high quality one. There is, you know, high performance, or it says low latency, high performance. Don't go with that. Never go with default just because that will mess you up kind of thing. Profile, always go, I want to go with high. Don't ever go with high 44p or 444p. It gets really confusing. Level, higher the level, the more it will allow you to adjust the bit rate. So in this case, I had to go with 5.0 kind of thing. So it makes it you know, better. Two pass encoding. Now, I think that will increase the file size a little bit, but the quality is just so much better. GPU, Keep that at zero. B frames two. I can't exactly remember what B frames are, but these are the settings that you might want to go to. Audio. Now, as you can clearly see, when we went to here and it's track one, track two, track one, track two, I can have them labeled. So look, if I go to here, it's mic, mic, and then audio. So obviously, these ones are set to the highest bit rate that this will allow. So this way, when I'm recording, I can go into my editing software and see the two, two tracks there that, well, you know, I can go and edit. Again, if you have more tracks, add that. Again, always set it to the highest bitrate. You can name it, things like that. Replay buffer, I think that's only if you're streaming that you might want to need that. For streaming, pretty much want to have the same thing for recording, uh, except have, I think you need to have... Enforce streaming service encoding setting. I don't think you want to have that selected and have a, have the same bit rate. And I think this one wasn't a, a mess up. Just pretty much the same settings for recording have for streaming. And yeah, and then this is streaming. So again, I don't use that. Now for the general tab, I've got the dark setting here just because I like the gray. Uh, automatically check for updates. That's always great. Projects, you know, you can hide cursors, things like that. Really great. Now I'm going to hit cancel just because if there's settings and things like that I didn't want. Again, I don't want to apply just because I'm recording kind of thing. So I'm just going to hit cancel. So yeah. So yeah, OBS is free uh, free to download. It's great. It's amazing. It's it's a great recording software and everything like that. It, it just, it's perfect. Now we're going to go on to uh, editing software and settings and preset settings that I might use for this, you know, like how, how I pretty much how the video making process becomes a thing. So let's go to that. Okay, so we're in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. So if I'm not mistaken, that's the most recent version, or again, it's the most updated version of Premiere Pro, uh, which if it wasn't obvious, that is what I like to use. Uh, I don't like Sony Vegas just because it's really sketchy and it does it's not as high quality as it is uh, Final Cut meh. I just prefer Premiere Pro. It's what I like. It's what I in I have media production in my school and it's what I took and They showed us how to use stuff in Premiere Pro. So it's what I use. It's what I am comfortable with It's what I know the best stuff with now 
before starting, I am not a world famous editor or anything, so, you know, don't go taking that stuff, you know, all, all my stuff, you know, perfect and, you know, serious kind of thing. But, one thing I am going to need to do is timeline, because I don't know why it does this. There we go, Windows. Save changes to this workspace. There we go, okay. So, as you can clearly see, I got a few video files here, and yes, this is my custom layout kind of thing. So we have a few video files, and if you look at them closely, you can see that these are files that I've already recorded for this episode. So we're gonna, just gonna click and drag those into here. So I've already let the videos, you know, conform and everything like that. So, first thing you wanna do if you're using Adobe Premiere Pro, uncheck these boxes because what can end up happening is if you check these ones, uh, I've noticed that these might uh, overwrite certain things or these will be certain files that will be selected. I just prefer to stay away from that kind of stuff. So yeah, so that's so this is just a quick, well not quick, it's eight minutes kind of thing, but it's a file here, I'm just gonna zoom in. So as you can clearly see, there's two things. We've got video at the top and audio at the bottom. So when I click on it, you can see that all of it's selected. So I'm gonna go right click, I'm gonna unlink, so this way I can go into things individually and I don't have to worry about things uh, sep uh, you know, being clicked on at the same time and accidentally adding effects to different things. It also creates a little sequence down here that you don't need to worry about as much. And Adobe Premiere saves, so that's good. So if I just start playing the video. Now if it wasn't obvious, that audio is mono, but it is mono in the left ear. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go, I've got my little effects thing down here and I'm going to, I'm actually going to go do that and then I'll do that. There we go. Pardon me as I just do that. So I'm going to go to fill and I'm just going to type that in. So as you can see, there is two audio fill options. So it's fill right ear with left ear. So not right here, don't worry, but it's fill right with left. So pretty much whatever audio is coming from the left side, uh, I guess you say left, left audio channel will be put into the right. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't want, now if I press fill left with right, what that will do is pretty much mute the audio. So I'm going to do fill right with left, do that. So there you go. Yeah, the audio in both uh, both ears. Now, obviously, this is mono, so that you don't have to worry about stereo stuff. So yeah. Now, our next good thing, our next thing we're gonna have to look at is audio. So if we, it's a little quiet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to audio gain. So I'm gonna right click on the clip, go down to audio gain. Then I'm going to, you don't have to do this stuff. This is if you need to again raise the audio, but you can do that here kind of thing. So I'm gonna go to click on normalize all peaks and then I'm going to select negative three so what that does is it may make the audio a little bit quieter but there's a special preset that I will show you how to get how to do and make that we can fix so what that does is if the audio is too loud what it will do is it'll take certain it'll take spikes and things like that and it'll, it'll basically raise the audio depending on if it's too loud or if it's too quiet then it won't kind of thing now, as you can clearly see, audio kind of starts to get a little louder up here, so that's probably why things looked like it got a little quieter, but... So, as you can clearly tell, it's just quiet in general. So, we're going to go back to audio gain, and, ah, set gain to that. So, that's pretty good. So, as you can see, the peak amplitude means out of, in, in the entire track, the highest the audio will go on this track so that the highest point the audio reaches is negative 0.6. Now the reason why I chose negative 3 to normalize all my peaks to is because that's pretty much the base audio. It's not too loud, it's not too quiet, it's in the perfect Goldilocks zone. Now you can go to YouTube and you'll see ones that are like 2.8 or something like that. If it's within that negative 6, uh, negative 3 decibel range, maybe a little bit higher but again, it, it, it makes it really perfect. So yeah, so now in this case, this one's still a little quieter, but 
We'll just scrub through this. Now you can kind of see the average is somewhere in between 9 and 12. So what I'm just going to go do is I can, you don't have to do this, but what you can do is you can go to, I'm just going to go to audio gain and then I'm going to adjust gain by, I'm going to punch in two of that, two of that, so it raises it up. So as you can see, I'm just explaining everything like that. Now I'm already pretty happy with the way this clip to turn out, turn, turn out turned out so I don't I don't feel as if I need to do any trimming and I think it's pretty good as much as I you know not great about the angles and lighting it's already a pretty good clip and also the video has been going for quite some time so I probably be picking up with this you know what I mean I don't want to be dragging on so that's the first intro clip so now what I want to do is well you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna first I need to bring in the other clip now going to notice with this clip, this is the one that I was doing the screen recording. So pretty much the, well, the the thing that you saw last in the video is what this is. Now, remember how I talked about how there's two audio channels here? Look here. There's two things there. Now, the reason why this one doesn't have any audio or is showing, again, very little is because, well, think about it. There was no audio going on on the desktop, so I wasn't playing the game or there wasn't like a video or something happening in the background. There wasn't that. There wasn't something there. So I can go do, thank you Adobe Premiere Pro for saving, is I'm just going to go again, remember, unlink. Then I can select that channel individually, and then I'm just going to delete it. So I'm just going to, you can press the delete key. In my case, I have it auto say, I have a, a key binder to the X key. So I'm just going to delete it. So there. Now that's one less thing for my video, uh, for my rendering to worry about, so I don't have to worry about having an extra random channel taking up space that I could use. And again, it's it's there. It, it's, it doesn't have anything, it doesn't have any use kind of thing. So we're just going to go back, and then I'm just going to select, I think it's this tool. Yep. Oh, no, wait, wrong one. I think I want to... Okay, I don't actually want to do that. I was trying to be all pretty sly for a for a YouTube guy, but what you can just do is if there's a hollow place and you need tracks to come together, you can just right-click on it and select Ripple Delete. So now if we watch, so it's kind of a, a odd transition. Now in some cases, uh, a good like you you will just need a cut. You just you will end up needing to have the video just switch and in some cases with gaming that's a good thing one thing i like to do and i've started to do now and i'm really happy i thought of this is i'll just type in cross whoops that's course cross that's my fat fingers today so as you can see this highlights two little options so cross dissolve and then constant i think it's constant power or something can't exactly read the rest of the thing. If I hold it over, will it show me? Okay. So what this is, is this is pretty much like a fade to the next thing. So if I take cross dissolve, for this is for video in this case, and I say put it here. Oop. What? Ah, okay. Okay, well, I can change repeated frames. That's okay. Don't know why it's doing that. So as you can see, it's kind of like a, a nice transitional fade to the next thing. So if I press play here, it, it, it does like a nice slide in. And now this constant power one is pretty much the same thing, but with audio. So I'll just click and drag it eh, on top. So it does a nice beautiful pan actually hold on one thing I'm gonna I'm just gonna control Z that and I want to see will it yeah okay so it just I think it's just because it's a transition between different files or something okay so let's just keep it like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my scrubber over this and you know what? I want to make this a little longer so I'm gonna, I want to make the audio thing a little 
more theta in Audi kind of thing. So what I'll do is I'll just move that real quick. Zoom it in if the darn thing would let me. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to worry about that, but you get the idea I'm going for. It's a nice transition. So as you can clearly see, you can hear me talking. Now, when I brought up the, uh, I mentioned the fancy preset and audio changing, things like that. This is what this is for. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to go into audio gain. I'm going to click normalize all peaks. And I'm going to go to negative three again and as you can see it gets a little louder which is good because as you can clearly tell the audio was a little quiet and now it's in my personal in, in my case and what has been happening with videos is it's better to have the audio be a little quieter in recording and then bump it up and do all that kind of stuff so that allows me to again get more fine things now again you may be thinking oh well you can hear you know background noise and stuff and it's like well no that's just not the case it just here listen So it sounds so much louder, but it still retains its nice cleanness. And again, it's not bumping up the gain. It's taking all the uh, quieter things uh, in the video. So bumping that up and taking all the uh, louder things and bumping them down. So this way it fits in the about negative three uh, decibel range. So that's what we want. Now I'm going to, I have a preset for this that I've just, named mic audio good but since this is a tutorial what you want to do is you want to search up master mastering so what that can do is so now what we can do is we can delete that go back to this so select mastering click and drag it onto there and if you did things properly the little eye fx icon should look green then you're just going to go back into effects control and you're going to click on the edit thing there we go this is what we need so it's probably going to bring you up to this so what you're going to want to do is i prefer to do the preset reduce so what that ha uh, does is it doesn't allow me from peaking and it makes the audio i don't know, sound a little bit cleaner now as you can clearly see there's a little thing here called peaking enabled so if i was to click that what that would do is it would allow audio to go above the range that I would like it to. And as you can see, since I don't have that enabled, it will not peak. So there'll be a specific level, uh, which is the negative three range that, or again, thereabouts kind of thing. It will not peak and get the, you know, the weird crunchy audio for lack of a better way of saying it. So if you play the audio again. Now, one thing you might have noticed if you're listening closely is the audio might have gotten a little bit quieter. So what you're going to do is you don't want to touch anything else. Go over to this and punch in three and then hit enter. So what this does is this pretty much, for lack of a better way of saying it, repairs the uh, fact that the audio got a little bit quieter. So if I play it here, So the audio is the same level, but it just, if I was to again say, psst, talk really loud in a video, so say I'm playing a horror game and I, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I scream and I just peek my microphone a bit there. But if I scream, uh, what this will do with, especially with the uh, normalize all peaks to thing, this will allow the, you, you will clearly tell that the, I screamed and it will be, the mic, the audio might get a little louder, but it will not peak. It will not get louder. It will sound like it gets louder. I guess you could say it, it stays within that nice, comfortable range. So that's what you want to do. And for me, that has been working the best. Now, oh, thank you. We're going to go back and I'm just should also be checking. I've been recording. Okay, so it's going to be a, you know, a, a decent sized file. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to here. Now, I hear you saying, well, what if I have uh, a 
like I'm recording a game in the background. Well, what you want to do with that game is you want to have, again, depending on the game, you it's, in my personal opinion, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good thing to do is to have the game audio a little quieter than the uh, mic audio that you have. So the person talking. So, because again, it's better to hear the person talking and, you know, know what they're saying and get good information instead of just literally watching a game be played. So, again, audio is important. Again, in this case, I don't have a second track, so I'm not I'm not recording a game, so I don't need to worry about that. But in the case of games, it's best to just go around and fiddle with the audio settings. Now, one thing I will give you, you know, a, you know, I give my advice on is when you're doing audio game, all you want to do is just, again, if the game is really quiet, raise the audio. If the game is really loud, just lower it. So set the gain or adjust the gain, things like that. But don't put any special effects on it because that will just ruin the game. And again, unless you're adding, like you're supposed to be make, you're making like a really dramatic video kind of thing, maybe, but Again, if you're just recording again, like how I would, that's just what you're going to want to do. So I'm just scrubbing through here, and I didn't have a problem with that recording. I like it. It was really good. So now what I'm, I'm doing is I'm just going to watch the end here. So... Now, since I'm currently recording the video that is showing you how to edit, pretty much, I can't actually show you how to edit the rest of the video just because I actually have to go make it and things like that. But, uh, yeah, let's just uh, transition to the end of the video and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess this is the uh, end of the video. So, you can see this is... What's well, and I apologize uh, for the fact that there wasn't any desktop audio and things like that. Oh, come on, focus. So I apologize for the fact that you couldn't hear the videos and some things. I'm sorry, that, that was just the way OBS seemed to work. I don't know why I did that. I'll try to fix that. But, yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for in being here and, uh, you know, helping me do what I, uh, what I love. Uh, as much as it, you know, I may not have the highest quality production kind of thing, and you know, I, I have good equipment, but I may not have the best equipment, or I may not even have the best experience, well, I clearly don't have the best experience, but for the people that have been staying around here since the beginning, and the people who have really, uh, you know, helped me get through it, it it's, it's great to know that there's uh, people who are still out there who are actually willing to come on a daily basis and watch my uh, content and it's just it's it's very great and it's it's very good I may and I may not have you know a million subscribers kind of thing like that but the fact that there are still people out there who will come to my channel and watch my content even if it is very cringy and you know kind of kind of like a, I guess you say lower budget kind of thing even if it's just that case it, it's great to know that there are still people out there who you know will support smaller creators and I'm again I'm not making money or anything off of YouTube like that's not the point of you uh, for for me that was never the point of YouTube I just always want to have a cool YouTube channel that gave me you know a reason to make fun cool little videos and stuff like that so yeah you've you guys have uh, really really drive me to you know really go really go overkill with a lot of stuff, which I'm totally fine, you know, have, having this kind of microphone, you know, I don't have a problem with that, I didn't even finish face, you know, I don't have a problem with having such great equipment, but, whoa, well, geez, guess the video is starting over again on that one, let me just rewind to the back there, just because I'm going to need to, need to add some stuff, there at the end, we'll take this video kind of thing, but yeah, so I just, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here and uh, supporting my channel. But either way, I'll see you guys in the next video.